Is it possible to heat your house on renewable technologies alone? Hello, I'm Griffiths. Welcome to Greening Griffith. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living, and we do reviews as well. Now I'm going to share with you how I heat my home here or heat the farm here on renewable energy and talk you through the whole system, show you the whole system. So if you wanted to do something like this at your small or in farm or even a house, then you would be able to follow how we've done it. So starting off, we've got solar panels on the roof. So having the solar panels on the farm here has roughly saved us about half our electricity bill a year, so it's 50% off. Now, it's well worth us having the solar panels here on the farm. Obviously, we've got a honey business here, and we process a lot of honey, beeswax, etc. So we're using electricity in the day. Now, we haven't got a battery system on this because we're actually using the electricity up in the day. If you weren't working from the farm or working from the home, solar panels may not be the best option for you. But if you're certainly working from home, you're running a lot of heavy electricity stuff, stuff like the honey melter, beeswax melter, extractors, all that kind of stuff, which uses a lot of electricity, then solar panels is well worth it. Now, this solar panel is actually heated directly linked to the central heating system and the hot water system as well. But I'll show you that as we go through the system. Now, the main source of heating for our farm is, you guessed it, wood. We live on a farm, so we've got plenty of access to wood. We cut the wood down, split it, season it, we dry it up in this log store. Or I should say, my dad likes to do all this work. So, in fairness to my dad, he's stacked this shed up. He's done it for a good couple of years for us now. And uh, he does a fantastic job. That's not my stack in there, just in case he sees this video and uh, thinks that I'm taking the credit. My dad stacked this log store for us. And that's the kind of wood you're looking for. So we burn a lot of ash, especially now with ash dry back. I think the majority of us in here now is ash. We've got a lot of problem in the UK now with ash dry back. A lot of ash on roadsides have been felled, etc. And it's just such a shame that one of the main UK trees we've got in the UK, a large percentage of them is going to die. And if they're in a high public area, a road or say a, a yard here on the farm, and unfortunately that tree has got to come down if it's showing serious sign of disease. Because chances is, if that tree has got ash dieback disease, Unfortunately, the odds is against it and sooner or later it's going to come down and you don't want it coming down on you, someone else at your property or a member of the public. Losing the large percentage of ash uh, like we are going to do just in the UK is uh, it's a disaster. It's a disaster for what the countryside looks like. I mean, there's large areas of Wales which the woodland is purely ash. I just dread to think what those areas are going to look like once all the ash is just dead standing there. And, you know, if from an environmentally point of view as well, so much insects, birds, wildlife, etc. visit the ash trees for their habitat, for their source of food, etc. And like honeybees, honeybees doesn't actually go to the ash, but a lot of ash trees out there get covered in ivy, and that's a great source of nectar and pollen for the bees. So it is a disaster all round. But just because it's a disaster, you don't want to waste that wood if that ash is going to come down. It is still a great renewable energy source for your farm or house. Now, a lot of people think that burning wood is actually bad for the environment. And you, when you're burning wood, you're releasing carbon back into the atmosphere. And that's true. But this is the truth. You drop a tree, cut it, that goes in the log store, then you burn it. As long as that tree gets replanted, that tree is going to grow and it's going to suck all that carbon back into the tree itself. So it's a, it's a circle, so like a life circle, but it's actually the re renewable energy circle. So you take carbon, release it, but then it goes back into the tree again. So it's a nice healthy circle. Unlike, say, oil or coal, you dig that out the ground, you burn it, that carbon has been released. 
there's just no way that you're going to be able to make hole to take that cam back in the ground that's physically impossible but with trees we've got some fast growing trees 20 year cycles where we can absorb all that carbon back into the ground or back into the tree so this is a renewable source of energy and you don't need to just burn logs if you can't get access to logs you can buy wood pellets etc lots of viable alternatives out there what i would say is when you're burning wood make sure that it's properly seasoned if the wood is wet that's going to create a lot more steam a lot more smoke it's going to block your chimney and that's not going to pass the regulations for burning once the wood is seasoned you hardly get any smoke once that fire is going <laughs> is there is a bit of work involved every day you've got to get the wood bring it in the house a basket like this normally lasts a day per wood burner so you do need access to a fair bit of logs it's not for everyone but it's a great way to save money and again super green and super efficient and sustainable and then again it's not just the work of carrying the wood into the house You've got the ash pan to empty as well. That needs emptying roughly every three, four days. Just creates a lot more dust in the house and it just means you need to clean the house more often. This is the Rayburn and this is the heart of the heating system here at Brimbach. This Rayburn heats the hot water and the central heating and this will easily do the whole house just on this one wood burner. Now, if you wanted to get the central heating up really hot we do need to lit the other fire which is connected up to the system so it's a great time just to talk about that so we've got a hot water system upstairs this is linked up to it and another wood burner the solar panel is linked up to it as well so you've got two sources of wood by a fire heating the water and the central heating as well as the solar and there is oil backup if we need for whatever reason run the oil instead of using the, the renewable energy now like i mentioned most of the time this raven is all we, we need to lit up in the house it's only when it's really cold we need to get the other fire going as well because the biggest thing with wood burners in the house unless you've got a backup boiler on it a lot of the energy created and the heat is wasted it's just tied up to one room where because this is tied up to the central heating system We've got, we've got zero heating waste. Every heat that this produces is re-transferred to the rest of the house. So it's not just building a huge amount of heat in one room. This does spread it around the farm. And the added benefit of the Rayburn is compared to, say, a normal type of conventional wood burner. You've got the oven here, cookie food in, and you've got the hot plates where you can also cook your food so this by far is the one wood burner heating unit of the house you will use all year round uh, buying this Rayburn was the best thing we did for our farm number one the amount of money we've saved not buying oil and number two just by having pretty much free hot water off the fire Now, if you wanted to learn how this Rayburn actually works with all its features, I've actually got a video on YouTube showing you exactly how to use a wood-fired Rayburn with all its different features, what's opening, what's closing. So I'll link that up in the description for you if you're interested in the Rayburn itself. So this is the second wood burn that we've got at the farm here. Again, this is connected up to the hot water tank and the central heating. So this is just a backup wood burner for us. If anything would have happened to the Rayburn or it's out of action for a while, then this is more than capable to heat the hot water for the whole day, no problem. But it's not quite hot enough to heat the central heating as well. 
It will take the edge off in the house, but this unit can't take as much wood as the Rayburn, so it doesn't produce the same amount of heat. But hot water wise, this will heat up the whole hot water that you will ever need just off a small wood burner like this. Now just to note, because this has got the back boiler on it, the water absorbs a huge amount of heat out of the wood burner. So this wood burner doesn't heat the room itself up as well as a wood burner without the hot water system, because the heat gets sucked away and then taken upstairs into the tank. Now we have got a third wood burner on the farm that is not connected up to the hot water system. So that only heats that one room and it's just more of a, a luxury treat if we sit in in the other room. You can light that fire and still continue to be warm off the renewable energy. Um, but that doesn't actually contribute to heating the farm hot water or the central heating. It's just a standalone unit where this and the Rayburn is all connected up to the same system. So the way the water is heated up here, we've got copper pipes coming down there and then into the back. It's exactly the same on the Rayburn, but we'll go upstairs now and I'll show you where these pipes go to. So here we are, the guts of the heating system. Now, we've had to sacrifice the air and cupboard here, so we've got no clothes uh, storage space whatsoever. The heating system here is taking up the entire space. I'll talk you through this as much as what I understand, but a lot of this is beyond my uh, capabilities. It's very, very complex heating system, but I will do my best. If you think of putting this heating system like this, show this video to your plumber, he'll be able to work out how all these bits of pipes and motors work. So we've got a big copper heating tank insulated to keep the heat in, and the insulation on this is absolutely tremendous. If the fire were to go out to say four o'clock in the afternoon, you can still have two or three showers at eight, nine, ten o'clock the next day and the water is still red hot. That's how good this is at keeping that heat. It will easily keep the heat in here for 18 plus hours with no extra heating going into it. So we've got three thermostats. I'll start about this. So one of these is the oil central heating backup. One of them is the Rayburn. The other one is the wood burner. Now all of these are connected up together. So on the thermostat, the top one is set at 70. Then that is set at 65 and then that there is set at 50. The idea is it's hotter at the top of the tank than at the bottom of the tank. So if any of these thermostats kick off because this tank has gone too hot, any one of these motors, this red bit that you see here, kicks on and then it starts circulating the heat from the tank and then into all the radiators in the house cooling the tank by doing so and that's what's great about this the main uh, job of this hot water system is to heat the hot water first and as that gets up to temperature you've got excess heat then the system redistributes that heat across the entire house uh, the plumbers that did this they did a fantastic job I just told them what I wanted to get done I didn't even know if it was possible but they has that they've made it happen and it works fantastic. It's been in a good couple of years now. We've had zero problems off it. And oh, it is by far the best investment we've done at the farm here, yeah, hands down. A little bit more feature. So the solar panels can heat the system up as well. We've got two heating elements here in the tank. The tank is so big, one immersion heater isn't enough. This has got two and this is connected up to the solar panels so even in the night say we've got no wood there's no light so there's no solar electricity being created then the grid electricity will still power this up on electric if we needed to so the whole system on the farm is heated by wood solar grid electricity and if we need it oil it is just by far the best heating system I've ever seen and I'm so proud to have it in our farm.
So back to the question, is it possible to heat your home on renewable technologies alone? And the answer is, well, it depends really. Let's split that into two, electricity and heat. You could easily heat your house on renewable technologies alone, 100% that's easy to do. If we had a big enough supply of wood like we've had for the last couple of years, we can easily, so you easily heat the house on wood alone. The hot water and the central heating system on the system that we've got here, easy. And that would be the same whether you're buying wood pellets in into a biomass boiler type of thing. That would work exactly the same as wood. Now the only time we do heat the house up with oil is say we're late coming back into the house. We're only going to be up for roughly an hour just being purely lazy. We will just fire the oil central heating on then to give the house a quick blast before going to bed. That is pretty much the only time we use the oil. Everything else is used on wood. So that part of the question is yes. Let's look at electricity. Is it possible to heat your home on electricity that you generate yourself alone? On the system we've got here, the answer is no. We can only generate roughly half of the electricity we use here at the farm, but half is a great step forward. These solar panels are only getting better and better. Just producing half of what you use is still a great achievement and a great saving as well. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content, or you want me to talk about maybe more about the solar panels or more about something else, please drop me a comment in the comment section and I'll do my best to try and answer your questions. See you at the next video.